Abhisadat, it's so good to be with you again after a week of toil and labor, traveling mercies. I hope you had a great week and you're set to have a great Sabbath, getting into the word of the Lord. <clears throat> I'm a little hoarse, but I'm still going to carry on tonight. Tonight I'm going to continue to read in the book The Great Controversy. The Great Controversy. And tonight it will be The Great, great Controversy Ended. Um, it's chapter 42 of The Great Controversy. Chapter 42 and the page is 662. 662 of The Great Controversy. Again, the chapter is 42, and the topic is The Great Controversy Ended. Pray with us, please. Oh, Father and our God, we are so grateful for this another Sabbath day. We pray that there will come divinely near unto us. Lord, I just had news that my son, our son, uh, met it by accident and it is being sorted out. I pray that the holy angels would over shadow and over and that thou will overrule in the case regarding the pedestrian, the my son and everybody that is involved. Bless us as we study your word and help us that will We'll be in that place soon in your kingdom when, where there will be safety and peace. And there will be no accidents, there will be no trauma, no sickness, no, no virus that we are experiencing even now. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, um, troubled with... What um, I've just heard, but um, I'm going to see how far I can get in this, and then if I have to cut and go attend to, to that. But um, we are all the devil will throw monkey wrench in the wheel to stop it. Uh, damages sporks of our wheels and that's the type of news I'm having this um, Sabbath evening as I'm getting ready to go in the Word. All right, without further ado, um, <clears throat> we begin. At the close of the thousand years, Christ again returns to earth. He is accompanied by the host of the redeemed and attended by a retinue of angels. As he descends in terrific majesty, he bids the wicked dead arise to receive their doom. They come forth a mighty host numberless as the sands of the sea. What a contrast to those who were raised at the first resurrection. The righteous were clothed with immortal youth and beauty. The wicked bear the traces of diseases and death. Every eye in that vast multitude is turned to behold the glory of the Son of God. With one voice the wicked host exclaimed, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. It is not love of Jesus that inspired this utterance. The force of truth urges the words, from unwilling lips. And may I say here, the Bible tells us that every knee shall bow and every tongue that shall confess. 
This is where it will take place. Finally, as the wicked went into their graves, so they come forth with the same enmity to Christ and the same spirit of rebellion. They are to have no new probation in which to remedy the defects of their past lives. Nothing would be gained by this. A lifetime of transgression has not softened their hearts. A second probation, were it given them, would be occupied as was the first in evading the requirements of God and exciting rebellion against him. Christ descends upon the Mount of Olives, whence after his resurrection he ascended, and where angels repeated the promise of his return. Says the prophet, the Lord, my God, shall come, and all the saints with thee, and his feet shall stand in that day upon Mount Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof. There shall be a very great valley, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord, and his name one. Zechariah 14, 5, 4, and 9. As the new Jerusalem in its dazzling splendor comes down from heaven, it rests upon the place purifies, purified and made ready to receive it. And Christ with his people and the angels enters the holy city. Let me pause here and say that the, there's a part of her, that very part, will be purified even before the uh, brimstone and fire that will purify the earth. I want to stress this point because there are some who want to, want to say that God will not have a purified place on earth before the fire. We continue. Now Satan prepares for a last, uh, Satan prepares for a last mighty struggle for the supremacy. While deprived of his power and cut off from his work of deception, the prince of evil was miserable and dejected. While deprived of his power and cut off from his work of deception, the prince of evil was miserable and dejected for some reason. <laughs> I repeat that inadvertently, but it's worth repeating, what do you say? All right, let's move on. But has the wicked dead, uh, I'm looking on, on the screen because I'm expecting some text. But as the wicked dead are raised and he sees uh, the vast multitude upon his side, he hopes his hopes revive and he determines not to yield the great controversy. <laughs> he will marshal all the armies of the lost under his banner and through them endeavor to execute his plans. Uh, the wicked are Satan's captives. 
in rejecting Christ, they have accepted the rule of the rebel leader. They are ready to receive his suggestions and to do his bidding. Yet, true to his early cunning, he does not acknowledge himself to be Satan. He claims to be the prince who is the rightful owner of the world and who, whose inheritance has been unlawfully wrestled from him. He represents himself to his deluded subjects as a redeemer assuring them that his power has brought them from the graves and that he is about to rescue them from the most cruel tyranny. The presence of Christ having been removed, Satan's work wanders to support his claims. He makes the weak strong and inspires all with his own spirit and energy. He is supposed to lead them against the camp of the saints and to take possession of the city of God. With fendish exaltation, he points to the unnumbered millions that have been raised from the dead and declares that as their leaders, as their leader, he is well able to overthrow the city and reign, resigning his throne in the kingdom. Huh. Pity, pity him. In that vast throng, are multitudes of the long-lived race that existed before the flood, men of lofty stature and giant intellect, who, yielding to the control of fallen angels, devoted all their skills and knowledge to the exaltation of themselves, men whose wonderful works of art led the world to idolize uh, their genius, who, whose cruelty and evil inventions defiling the earth and defacing the image of God caused, caused him to blot them from the face of his creation. There are kings and generals who conquered nations valiant men who never lost a battle, proud, ambitious warriors whose approach made kingdoms tremble. In death, their experience now changed. No change, that's what he's saying. As they come up from the grave, they resume the current of their thoughts just where they ceased. They are actuated by the same desire to conquer that ruled them when they fell. Satan consults with the angels and then with these kings and conquerors and mighty men. They look upon the strength and numbers of their si on their sides and declare that the army within the city is small in comparison with theirs and that it, is, it can be overcome. They lay their plans to take possession of the riches and glory, the riches and glory of Jerusalem. All immediately begin to prepare for battle. 
skillful artisan construct implements of war, military leaders famed for their success marshal the throngs of warlike men into companies and divisions. You recall those uh, wars in the Bible. Um, these were, I mean, even look at Napoleon, Hitler and all these coming up to our time because as I <coughs> mentioned we are going to be studying the greatest of all wars that will be fought around Jerusalem. That's the last war. World War II will develop. You can see, you can feel it. You see what's happening right now in, with Ukraine and Russia. And so there will be a war. There will be a final world war. And God's people need to know where they stand. It's only the present truth at this time can inform us of what to say, where to go, how this will play out. Anyway, I'm not giving a study tonight, I'm just reading the Great Controversy. If you are just joining us, we are reading the Great Controversy, page 662, if you want to follow us. It's the topic. Uh, the great controversy ended, and it's chapter 42. Oh. <clears throat> well, I'm hearing somebody that I need to speak with. So, God bless you. May the grace of our Father and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship, Communion of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for watching. I pick up where we left off.